steroids, PEDs, and bodybuilding Q&A, episode two. Um, had some good stuff on the first one, uh, even more on this one. Uh, before I get started, if you have any questions you would like me to answer, uh, please ask them in the comment section below. Uh, I'd be happy to answer them, um, dig into your, you know, I'll do my best for you. Um, also, if you like my video, please take the time to push that like button. Um, and subscribe to my channel if you want me to keep pumping these out. The YouTube gods like it when you subscribe for the algorithm. Makes my uh, stuff show up higher in the listings when you subscribe. Um, also, if you want to get in contact with me directly, you can do so by uh, following me on Instagram at Paul K. Barnett. Um, also, my email address is down below uh, as well. So feel free to shoot me an email if you have any questions. You want me to answer directly. Okay, let's get started. Uh, first question here. If I run a testosterone so cycle for 10 weeks at a dose of 400 milligrams per week, what will my PCT be? Um, okay, so a couple things here. I don't think 10 weeks is really long enough. Um, I mean, it's I don't know. You're just kind of getting cooking at 10 weeks. Um, that's when I start feeling in my groove of the cycle, uh, you know, with strength and I, usually the wheels start falling off around somewhere around, you know, 14 to 16 weeks. Uh, I try to push it out to 16 weeks. I've taken them out as far as 20, 16 seems to be kind of the sweet spot. Um, I, I think personally, so I would, I would stretch it out to 16. Um, this also depends on your goals, what your goals are. If you're trying to be a bodybuilder. I feel I feel almost bad about encouraging this, but uh, I'm going to suggest it as an option. I'm not going to encourage you, but you, you should consider blasting and cruising. Uh, the problem with with coming off is that you I, just in my experience, you end up losing fucking everything. You feel like shit. Um, um, the PCT drugs make you feel like shit. You're, you're you 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 do not want to train uh, it messes your head up. You get depressed. I don't know. That's just my two cents, but if you want to come off, I would stay on longer, probably 16 weeks. Uh, uh, for for PCT, I would do, do some HCG and Novodex, just to keep it simple. Um, I hate Clomid. Um, it's just an estrogen bomb, uh, but uh, that's my two cents. HCG and Novodex, it can take up, you know, studies have shown after you've been on, test is so suppressive, it can take up to six months to get your full testosterone levels back to normal. So once again, if you're going to be only off for like six, eight weeks, it's not even worth coming off. Just cruise. That, that's my two cents. But um, anyway, let's move on to the next question. Uh, next question here. So how have your diet training and gear practices changed throughout the years? And how have your beliefs changed? Well, let's see. I started training when I was 16, 17 in high school. Um, I bought Arnold Schwarzenegger's Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding, and I did Arnold's crazy-ass high-volume split, followed his diet. Um, I didn't gain shit from it. It wore me down. Um, <laughs> I, you know, it was, I was like, like I'm doing what Arnold's doing. What, what's, what's missing here? I'll tell you what was missing. D-ball and prima bowling. <laughs> I didn't realize until I probably college, you know, halfway through college that, uh, that, that, you know, I, I used to think steroids were evil and, and, you know, it was cheating and, all, you know, you had poor ethics if you did steroids. And then to come to find out my hero did them, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And that's why I, my training program with him didn't work. Um, uh, so, you know, towards the end of college, I, I did my, just playing around. I don't know. Somebody gave me some, some Anadrol. I think it was, I don't know what it was at that time, either Anadrol or D-ball. I don't know. I don't know. I just took a pill every day. Um, I got a lot stronger. I got gyno <laughs> and, uh, I knew that I was onto something then. And, um, you know, but, uh, they were really hard to find. You had to know somebody who knew somebody and get trusted in a, in a circle to, to get anything back then. So I really couldn't find anything. Um, you know, so I was pretty much natural from the time I was 16 until about 24, 25. 
Um, and then I had some injuries and I took a couple of years off training. Um, I did switch to a Dorian Yates style training, uh, more of a hit style training, which worked better for me at that time. Um, and then, uh, and then I stumbled onto Dante Trudell uh, through um, the forums back back then. Uh, um, Intense Muscle, I believe it was, uh, and I started working with Dante. Dante trained me, and I switched to his high intensity training program, um, and his followed his protocol with gear usage, and um, I used back then primarily just testosterone. Um, maybe a little bit of trend, a little bit of nandrolone, but that was pretty much it. Um, and then I, I had some really bad injuries in my early thirties. Uh, I ruptured a disc in my back. I had, was in a car wreck and broke my fucking neck. Um, I had a bout of cancer and I just said, fuck it. I'm not, I'm done with the steroids. I, I got up to 300 pounds at one point. Uh, I said, I'm done with the steroids. I'm coming off completely. I'm not working out anymore. And I think it was around 32, 33. Um, I just completely quit the gym. Completely quit. And I did not lift a weight for, for 10 years. Um, I got into doing jujitsu. Um, did that. Sorry, my dog's barking. Um, got into doing jujitsu. And then it was just a couple of years ago, 45, 44, 45, I got back into it after divorce. That woke me up. And I had, to, I had to figure out a new way to train. I wanted, always wanted to compete in bodybuilding. Um, you know, I was a bodybuilding hobbyist when I was younger. And so I told myself I was going to do a show. And I started training, got bit by the bug again. Um, I've always been lurking on the forums and reading and researching. But um, anyway, so I, I got back into training. And I had to find a style of training that worked for me at my age. With beat up joints and multiple, <laughs> multiple knee surgery. So I went... Over the high volume, high um, uh, high rep scheme uh, training, and it's been working fairly well. Anyway, that's it for enough about me. Uh, next question: uh, Do you have any experience with thyroid downregulation after a cycle T three and T four? I do, in fact. Um, during my last contest prep, I probably got a little carried away with the T three and went up to hundred micrograms. Um, and it melted all my muscle away. I looked, I looked like a skinny, um, you know, Holocaust survivor afterwards. Um, and you know, I got my blood work done a couple of weeks after the show, you know, my, of course my T3, T4, everything was just crashed at that point. And, um, I wanted to see, you know, how a you know, hundred micrograms a lot, uh, what it, was surprised to see after about six weeks I got my blood work done again everything was back to normal the guys seemed to rebound quickly um, from using thyroid hormone women seem to not women it seems to cause a lot of problems with women for whatever reason so women have to be very cautious with it um, guys seem to bounce back I don't know why that is uh, somebody that knows more than me could probably explain that all right, <clears throat> next question here. What do you think of generic GH versus Pharma Grade? Um, I've tried both. Um, I get, had had a script from uh, HRT Clinic for uh, Pharma Grade eight, uh, GH, and I've tried the cheap ass Chinese blue top stuff. I've had my blood work done after using both. And there was no difference in my IGF-1 levels. Absolutely none. It was exactly the same. Um, so I don't know why you would pay all that money if your IGF-1 levels aren't any higher on the Pharma Grade GH. So I think it's probably a waste of money. Um, I also have a friend of mine um, who works in the pharmaceutical industry. And uh, he was telling me that most of the GH... Well, in, well, the stuff made in China, the pharmaceutical grade, there's only a couple factories in the whole world that really make it. It's extremely complex to make. And the factories that make it, um, he said where the generic stuff comes from is the whole make the pharmaceutical grade shit and then have some of the powder left over and then they just fill it up in the bottles for the generic. So it's the same shit as the pharma grade. Uh, you know, the only difference is going to be 
it's maybe not measured and weighed um, to the same degree and the quality control maybe is not, in the packaging is not the same. Uh, also with shipping with Farmagrade, it's going to be refrigerated and handled with care. Uh, if you're uh, with the generic stuff, it may not be handled with the same care. So that might be why the potency sometimes isn't as strong as Farmagrade. Um, but all in all, it's the same shit. Um, I've also tested it with uh, the Roy, Roy test has these GH testing kits and it's, it's test positive as legit GH. So I don't know. I don't know why you would waste your money on, on the, on the expensive pharmaceutical grade stuff. Um, unless you're like vying for a pro card or, or competing at the top of the top level of the professional bodybuilding. That's just my two cents. I know pro bodybuilders that use generic GH. So I'll tell you that. All right. Next question. <clears throat> Uh, this is a doozy. I've been on D ball for three weeks, 50 milligrams a day, uh, 25 milligrams on off days, which is one to two days off, uh, 400, uh, test an athlete a week with it. I feel good, but it's not doing, uh, what I expected. Uh, my strength is okay, but I've been stronger, um, naturally before I'm looking for that cartoonish look. I don't want to use trend, but I do have NPP. I've had it for a few months now. I've asked a couple guys what they prefer, and they always say D-Ball. What do you think? Well, if you guys have listened to my videos, you know I think D-Ball is trash. Um, I don't know why people love it so much. It just bloats you up, makes your blood pressure go through the roof, um, makes you look like shit, and you get this red puffy look. I, I just... Essentially, EQ is injectable D-ball, so why not just take EQ? Um, also, EQ um, converts through 5AR to DHB, so you get the bonus <laughs> effect of having the DHB uh, with it as well. I, 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 to me, EQ is a better choice. Um, I know everybody likes D-ball because that's what Arnold's favorite drug was. Uh, um, I don't know. I would do something like, uh, you know, test and equipoise, test and um, test and nandrolone over test and D-ball. Um, also, to get that cartoonish look, that just takes years. That those are those guys are, you know, have been trading for years, using using uh, using compounds for years. They are also probably using insulin. Um, using GH, uh, that's what gets you that, what they call the 3D look. And you have to have this muscle size to achieve that. So, um, you know, you know, it's, it's more than just, it's more than just, uh, uh, D ball for a few weeks. It takes years of running gear to get that look, um, being perfect with your diet, taking the right compounds, training hard having good genetics. I mean, that's part of it too. Some people don't have the genetics to have those nice bubbly round muscles. They just don't have it. All right. Uh, next question here. Can you explain volume, particularly reps and sets per muscle group? I don't see a lot of videos explaining. Listen, I was curious about your take. Uh, I mean, for me, volume is simple. It's, it's, you know, I don't count working sets towards volume, but it's in, it's really just time under tension. How, how many sets that you're using uh, as working sets for, for a per body part. There's a lot of studies out there. I, I suggest checking out Renaissance Periodization's channel. Uh, Dr. Mike Israel, I've read a bunch of his books, I've watched his videos. He is the man when it comes to volume training. Um, and he knows his shit. I, I you know, he's going to explain it way better than I can. But I would highly suggest checking out Renaissance Periodization. And he has um, he has a, an entire section on hypertrophy training. And he has a book about high volume hypertrophy training that's excellent. I can't recommend it enough. Go check it out. All right. What do we got here? Next question. This guy says, fuck Anavar. I did 25 to 50 milligrams per day, and it gave me the worst muscle cramps I've ever had. I had to eat magnesium like it was candy all day to offset this. I remember trying to go to sleep and accidentally flexing my bicep while turning over 
in my sleep and it locking up my bicep in the worst cramp I've ever had. Now, T-ball, that shit is perfect. Well, I'll tell you something about Anivar. Most UGL Anivar is not Anivar. It's fake. It is D-ball, most likely. Sometimes it is Anadrol. Usually D-ball, because D-ball is dirt fucking cheap. Um, and D-ball does give you some nasty pumps and cramps. You know, guys don't take it on, on deadlift days because it gives such horrible low back cramps. I've never had cramps like I have when, I, when I've taken D-ball. I bet you you got D-ball, not Anivar. I, real Anivar shouldn't do that. Um, I mean, you do get good pumps, but I I don't think that was Anivar you got, dude. I think, I think you got some fucking uh, cheap-ass uh, UGL stuff that was fake and probably D-ball. That's my two cents. Um, all right. What do we got up here next? Um, is there any RX or supplement um, on your list which will limit or remove plaque or help reverse clogged arteries um, or blockages? I've also heard some people mention things like vitamin D, K2, niacin, curcumin, and can help remove plaque. Um, I don't even know what's the best. Um, or how to compare things. Um, so, yeah, a couple things here. Uh, I mean, once you're too far gone, the only thing that's going to reverse it is getting the stent put in. Um, it, but there, there have been studies. The Cleveland Clinic, I would suggest checking out the Cleveland Clinic. They're the uh, foremost expert on cardiovascular health in the United States, I think. Um, specifically, Dr. Caldwell Esselton. I've read some of his books. Yes, I'm a nerd and I read books about cardiovascular disease because I am that, that dorky. Uh, Dr. Conrad Esselton did a study where they had people on a super low fat diet and they reversed um, plaque buildup in people with a combination of using lipid or statins and a low, super low fat diet. It was almost a complete vegan diet, really. Um, uh, you know, there's several, uh, cl clinical studies done on, um, in particular Lipitor and, um, Crestor that, uh, over a long-term use at high dose can reverse, can reverse some, some, um, some blockage. Now, proactively, I take things like, um, I, I take fish oil, fish oil will help raise your, your, um, your good cholesterol, um, I take niacin at night. Niacin will help as well. Um, I I take a I take a prevastatin. I take a statin, a low dose statin every day is more of a preventative thing. Um, I try to eat a relatively low fat diet. I don't eat a very high fat diet. I stay away from saturated fats. Um, there's very minimal saturated fat in my diet. Um, I, I think that'll get you in trouble. A lot of guys go crazy with the balking you know i see these strong men that are eating bacon and fucking sausages and cheeseburgers all day long those guys are asking for it um they're going to clog up their arteries so i would say a combination of statins fish oil um uh, uh low fat diet staying away from oral steroids oral steroids crush your fucking lipids um you know so i mean you know just you know, those are just some things I would do. Check out Dr. Cald Caldwell Esselton's book. It's very really good. Um, let's see. Another question here. Would you agree to bodybuilding beginners to try products that do not shut down normal body functions like HGH, insulin, DHEA, antiesters, the serums, blah, 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 etc.? Well, first of all, not everything has a negative feedback loop. Uh, insulin doesn't. Um, I don't know that antiestrogens have a negative feedback loop. Um, you know, so, you know, that's not true. Uh, uh, my, my advice for beginners is not to take anything, uh, learn how to lift, um, learn how to eat, get a couple years under your belt and figure out what the fuck you're doing before you consider gear. That's what I would do and do a lot of research. Make sure you know what you're getting into. Or get a good coach that's an expert that can help you gu help guide you if you're ready to go down that route. Um, uh, you know, also be don't be afraid to ask your co coach questions and challenge them. You know, ask why. I think there are a lot of coaches out there that are fucking idiots. Um, 
you know, not trying to slam them, but I see some protocols that they prescribe for people. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Uh, it makes no sense to me. I think they just do weird shit to try to make themselves seem like they're doing something different, unique, new, um, that makes them seem smarter than what they are. I don't know, but, uh, don't, you know, if you do get that, get that far down, ask your coach questions. And if a coach doesn't want to answer questions, you got the wrong coach. Um, which is better, a Remedex or Novodex? Well, first of all, there are two different types of drugs. One is an aromatase inhibitor, and the other is a selective estrogen receptor modulator. So they do really two different things. Arimidex, um, uh blocks the aromatase enzyme from converting um, testosterone into estradiol, and Novodex is, uh, blocks the... Uh, the estrogen receptor um, at the breast tissue. Um, it was, so they really do two different things. Um, I don't know that one's really better than the other. They 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 do two different things and they can be applied at two different times. Um, you know, so they're not universe. <laughs> they don't. They don't. One's not a substitute for the other, in my opinion. Um, anyway, that's all I got for today. I hope you enjoyed my video. Um, if you have questions. You want answered in a future Q&A, put them in the comment section. I will make sure I get them on. Peace.